Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to today's service. I think um, um, Zoom is being good today. So let's just get on with it before anything else happens. Um, We ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, today's service, uh, the, the theme of the service is I believe in God's grace. And throughout this service, what we are hoping that at the end we will have been able to come to understand is what we believe as Christians, um, the foundation of our belief, um, the scope of God's grace for us, and the depth of his love for us, and that the faith that we need to have for, to have our wholeness in communion. Um, and so by the end, I'm hoping that um, each and every one of us will have something that they can take away uh, with them in, in, in from, from the service. So we're going to start with a um, uh, song that talks about what do we believe in? Um, because what is it? What is the essence of what we believe in? So in, in this praise song, you will be able to see that.
song was based on the Apostles' Creed. Um, if you don't know about the Apostles' Creed, is the, the Apostles' Creed is uh, is what are some of the early churches, early church um, put together the essence of our faith, the essential element of what our faith is. And it has existed since probably 390 AD um, and it's gone down the line. But in the essence of our faith, this is what the Apostle Creed uh, says. That I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under those he made, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Christian Church. The Holy Communion, as instituted by Christ, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The essence of our faith, of what we believe, this is what we believe in. This is who we are when we say that we are Christians. This is the uh, essential element of what it is for us to be Christians. But where Where's the, where's the foundation? On what foundation do we base this belief? On what do we really base this belief? And the next worship song tells us about that foundation on which we base this. That the road that led to this particular, uh, particular statement of faith. is my Savior's blood Your beauty of heaven wrapped in my shame The image 
Bible passage, our Bible reading for this morning is found in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 and to 20. Christ suffered for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. So he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Those who disobeyed God long ago when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. Only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood. We just want to look at the scope of God's grace. The scope, how wide and how extensive is God's grace. And this Bible passage tells us about that. If we, I, I, I put, some, put the passage into a kind of picture so you can see what this passage is actually talking about as a, uh, 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 as as a, as a narrative, and this is the picture I've 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 I've, I've put out for us to see, uh, just to describe the picture, where uh, where we have Jesus here, Jesus is this is the center. This is at the cross. This is at the cross, where Jesus died at the cross. Grace went backwards into time, backwards in time to the time of Noah, when that was when the world was destroyed and only eight people survived. So verse 19 and 20 of this passage tells us about how Jesus went backwards to offer grace even to those who were already dead at the time, during if right as far back as the time of Noah. It says, so he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Their bodies were gone, but their spirits were still alive. To those who disobeyed God long ago, when God was waiting patiently while Noah was building the ark. That was grace going all the way back. They didn't deserve it, but grace went back to preach. When you go and preach to somebody, you have gone there to convince them. You have gone there to speak to them, to persuade them, to, to tell them of the good news. So when, um, if you earlier on in the creed, he said he, 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 was, he went to the dead. He went backwards. Grace went backwards to Noah, to the time of Noah's time to preach to those people. That's how far God was ready to exercise grace. And grace also went forward. Because in that passage in verse 18, he says, Christ suffered for our sin once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you. Now you, which is me and you, were in the future of the cross. So even grace went forward to wait for us. That when we come onto this earth, grace will be available to us. So this is how, this is the scope of God's grace. This is how wide and how, how extensive it is. It, it, it went backwards and he and he, and he's gone forward so that he suffered physical death but he was raised to life in the spirit and this is what we do we have when we say that we believe in God's grace now that really leads leads me to to today's sermon um, which 
I'm sure you would not be very difficult to guess what the title of the sermon is. I believe in God's grace. Um, this is very important to, for us to really take note of this because uh, we are what we believe. We are what we believe because we are actually created to have to believe. We have a believing instinct in us. Even the agnostic that says that I don't believe in anything, I don't believe in God, I don't believe in this, still believes in the fact that he doesn't believe. So the agnostic that doesn't believe in something believes that he doesn't believe. So we are, God designed us to believe. So it's very important for us to understand what we believe because we can believe something passionately and it is an error. If the people who go and commit um, terrorism, they have a passion, they believe passionately in what they have been taught, but yet, and then they go and kill themselves and kill others because of that belief. So they believe wrongly. Now, in the I, I, in statistics of the world, there uh, twenty nine percent of the people in the world profess to be Christians. Profess Christianity, twenty nine percent as of today, as of now, and that's about two point three billion people. Now, ten years ago, uh, that was the percentage was thirty one point four percent of the popula of the of the people in the world believed. They were Christians, and of that, uh, the people who came second to that is Islam, which is 23.2 percent 10 years ago. Today, Islam is 24 percent, and Christianity is 29 percent. Uh, it's not that Islam has grown to take over the difference between the 31, 31.4 or 29, is that Christianity has shrunk rather than Islam growing to take over. And the reason why Christianity is shrinking is because most of the time, Christians highlight our differences rather than what unites us. And because we are not united as a body, as a body of Christ, then it shows up our differences. And there's so much that is going on between all of us as we look at it, uh, we unfortunately, we have taken our differences as the pillar of our faith, which is not. Our differences, for example, the Salvation Army, they don't believe in baptism and communion. Uh, the Seventh day Adventists, they believe in the Sabbath. Um, the Nazarenes, they don't believe in speaking in tongues. And the Pentecostals believe that everything must be based on speaking in tongues. And so somehow we brand ourselves around the differences rather than branding ourselves around the, the essential elements of our faith. So it's important. The question is, do we believe in God's grace? And if that answer, no matter whether we worship God on, on Saturday or we don't believe in communion, um, if, that, if that is the answer, then why don't we explore where we are united and what, what we believe in and look and try and brand ourselves, brand, uh, brand ourselves at, at our differences. You see, it's just not... Uh, uh, enough to say, oh, I believe in God. Um, um, for those who cannot, who are not on, on, on video, um, I've got a picture here of the light shining because God is light. So if this was God, if this, is, if this, is, if this was God, uh, the light, the center of that light is God. And somebody says, oh, I, I believe in God. Yeah. Uh, many people believe in God. Many, many different religions say they believe in God. And some will argue it's not our God, it's not their God. But at the end of the day, the God they believe in is the God they believe in. They say they believe in God. 
But when you say you believe in God, it only gets you as far as just living at the fringes of who God is. If you say, oh, I only believe in God, you just get onto the fringes of who God is. You are aware of his presence, but you are not at the center of who he is. But when you believe, when you believe in God's grace, it is believing in God's grace that takes you to the center of who he is. It is his grace that can get you there, not your works, not what you obey, what you don't obey. It is the, his grace that takes you to the center of his being. And this is what we need to understand about understanding God's grace. Now, the, the, like we were saying, earlier, uh, we're looking at earlier on, our, the Apostle Creed actually spells out all this, but it's very interesting that when you look at the Apostles' Creed, you find that Christians, when we start from the beginning or beginning of it, we seem to all agree, and suddenly, as we go further down the, the thing, there begins to be uh, places of contention, places of, oh, I don't agree with that, oh, I agree with that. But the whole essence, if you look at it, I believe, if you say, I believe in God the Father, God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, that's God. All Christians believe in God. If you say, I believe in Jesus, his, his only Son, our Lord, all of us believe in Jesus. If you say he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, we recognize yeah, that there is the Holy Spirit. He was born of a Virgin Mary. We know that he came to earth. All of us believe that Jesus came and walked on this earth and Mary was his mother. Uh, if, we, if we say that um, he suffered under those who he made, was crucified and died and, and was buried, we know that he was innocent, but he died a brutal death on the cross. As Christians, we believe that he, was, he, he on the third day, he rose again. We, we understand that, that yes, he, he, he won his victory over death. As he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We know that Jesus is alive today and is seated with the Father. And we we all in agreement so far on that. And then he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And we believe that he has the power uh, to rule and to judge. And all authority has been given to him. Uh, we believe that he yeah, we believe in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Christian Church, we believe that the Holy Spirit is with us today and is in the church. And then we come to the point where we say we believe in the Holy Communion as secured by Christ. This love is, is, is the love he has given to us, that he told us about. It is his love that motivated healing and redemption. And that is where we begin to see some differences. And some people then build their whole ethos of their Christianity on that bit. Or when we say that, um, oh, we believe in the forgiveness of sins, that is the grace of merited favor, people begin to argue with that. They begin to think, well, no, you have to keep the Sabbath, you have to do this, you have to do that, and that is where we have differences. Uh, the resurrection of the body, uh, of the body, the benefit of God's grace, people will argue that. And life everlasting, which is the forever, for, that we are forever into eternity. But really, the essence of who we are is all this. And yet, somehow, as we get into the benefits of who we are, people begin to have objections. So we need to know what and who and, and, and what, what we believe in. And that is what this, uh, the Apostles' Creed gave us, a full element of what it is that we, we, we believe in. But what is the depth? We've looked at the scope. We've looked at what we believe. But what is the, the depth of our faith? Well, how, what are the, how, does the, how do we relate to the depth? How deep is this our faith? How deep is this our belief? How deep is this God's grace in, in truth, Jesus Christ? And this Bible passage in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 38 and 39, tells us, For I am convinced that neither death nor life 
neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, neither anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And all Christians should have that understanding, especially when you have been, when somebody is trying to bring you into condemnation. You should have an understanding that this is what, this is how, how deep the love of God is for us. Uh, the depth of God's grace. Now, for, for, for us to really understand this, I've created a picture for us just to see what this, what this actually means in, in, in picture form. And, and if we look at this picture, this is a, a, a picture that shows you. Here you see um, almost like the scale. It says, for I am convinced that neither death, I mean, you can see death there, it's been chopped off the, 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 um, the, the platform. As soon as the love, of, the love of God in Christ Jesus steps on it, everything, everything else, flies off. All creation, high depth, future angels, nothing can withstand or outweigh the love of God in our lives. And this is, a, this is what this passage is about. It tells us with confidence that the love of God for us will knock off all these things and they will have no influence on how and who he is in, in, to us and who we are in, 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 in God. This is the essence of our belief. This is what God's grace means to us. Nothing can withstand. Nothing is heavier, nothing is stronger, nothing is, uh, is more powerful than the love of God in Christ Jesus that we have. And we need to understand that of nothing. So we should not be afraid of all these things. We should not be afraid of all, all these things as they seek to try to think, to force us to believe that they are stronger than the love of Christ in us. We shouldn't be afraid of that. And so this is what we understand by believing in the grace of God. Now, um, God is speaking. God is always speaking to us, but we're not listening. Um, people want to, you don't have to go on a retreat before you hear from God. You don't need a pastor to hear from God. You don't need, God is speaking. He's always speaking because he's near us, because we have the Holy Spirit in us. And just as we end uh, this, this, this sermon, I want to, to just show you an example of God speaking and how we ignore, how we don't hear him and we don't see him or, 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 or concentrate to what he's saying when he's speaking. Now, for those who are only on audio, um, you may not be able to see the pictures, but here you could just, I'll just give you an example uh, after the, the video has played uh, about what, what's happening.
speaking, but are we listening? Uh, for those who are, who are not able to see the video, um, there's a man who was going about his day and every time God spoke, there is a post-it note that is stuck either on, on something, whether God's saying, let's have a chat, let I love you. And he's going through how his whole day, but all this, uh, God is always speaking on the lift, in the train, and telling him he loves him and all that. And every time God spoke, it was a kind of a post-it note. And by the time he got home uh, in, the, in the evening, there's so much post-it note all around him, and he's got his headphones on, but he can't hear God. All he can hear is what he wants to hear, rather than what God is saying. And that is really something which we need to take note of. God is speaking, and even this week, God is speaking. If we just can just listen, and not only hear what we want to hear, you know, our iPhone, our plugs, we put an air plug on or air, airphone on, and we can only hear the negatives. We can only hear the fear. We can only hear the thing. When God is actually saying something completely different to, to us. That leads us into communion. I hope we all have our communion elements. I will... Um, let me just... Uh, I'll unmute the other to get us into communion. Dilla, are you on mute? Yes, I'm unmuted. Just before we take communion, I wanted to share something about faith. Hebrews 11 tells us that faith shows the reality of what we hope for, the evidence of things we do not see or we cannot see. When we take communion, we're actually taking communion in faith because we're having faith in what Jesus has done for us on the cross. The Bible also tells us that our hope, we as Christians, our hope is not like the hope of the world because our hope is in Christ. So I'd like us to join together and take communion in faith, believing as we thank God, believing that what we're thanking God for, we will see the manifestation of in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for sending your only begotten Son, the Son whom you love, the treasure of heaven, the one through whom all things were made, the one who holds all things together by the power of his mighty hand, your only begotten beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you are well pleased. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing your body to be broken for us on the cross. We ask that you set apart and make holy our communion elements. Your word tells us that surely by your stripes we are healed and made whole. We believe your word and we receive our healing in the name of Jesus. And as we partake of this bread, we ingest your health into our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. We may eat. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your blood for us on the cross. Thank you for purchasing the forgiveness of our sins with your precious blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the free gift of righteousness that we have through your blood. Your blood is the confirmation of the new covenant we have with God the Father. 
the covenant that tells us that you will be merciful to all of our unrighteousness and our sins and our lawless deeds you will remember no more. Thank you for the life in your blood. Thank you for the power of your blood in our lives. Thank you that your blood speaks of better things than that of Abel's. Thank you that your blood sets us free, cleanses us from all unrighteousness, and cleanses our blood from all impurities. We take this communion in remembrance of you and all that you have accomplished for us on the cross. Thank you for making us complete in you. Thank you for redeeming us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that as you are, so are we in this world. We take this communion to announce your lordship and to announce your death until you come again. In Jesus' name, amen. We may drink. Amen. Um, just uh, uh, as a footnote, because our services are now being put on YouTube, or put it on YouTube and all that, and we may have people who are not always, have not always been a member of our church, um, watch this particular YouTube or watch this service in, on other platforms. I just want to make you understand that uh, uh, for us as a church, I uh, believe that the communion elements that we take are just elements. There's no power in them. They themselves, they of themselves do not have any power. That's why we are, we are all using our different breads and items that we have in our various houses. Uh, we don't distribute specific breads to you to use in your homes. Um, they, are, they are just normal elements that in themselves have no particular power in them. But what we are operating on is what Diola said earlier on, which is faith. As we take it in faith, we believe that what Jesus has done for us will manifest in itself in our body. So it's more of what the, the faith of taking it. Um, for example, um, you and none of us was ever anywhere when a particular drug was being made. And um, you go to the doctors and they prescribe some drugs for you, some med medication for you. And there's something that when you take it, you're taking that medicine in faith. There is an element of faith that whatever the medicine was designed for will work for you. And then they even can tell you sometimes that there are side effects to the medicine, but we still take it because we have the faith to believe something can, it can fix something else in our body, yet it will have a side effect. When we take communion, there is no side effects. We take it in faith. And when we take it in faith, we believe that what Jesus said he was, did for us on the cross is going to be manifested in our bodies and in our well-being. Not just physical body, but in all uh, our, our well-being. So that is the essence. Um, it doesn't the bread doesn't turn into magically into the body of Jesus. No, it's just we take it in faith. Uh, so that's our belief. Just in case um, you you see us taking communion and you don't understand um, that element or that part of of of, of the service. And so now we are going to go to a time of prayer. Um, and um, we, we have three people who are going to lead us in prayer. So can, um, Shei would, would start. Um, so Shei, if you can unmute yourself. Thank you, Lord, for keeping with us this season. It's been a it's been tough for a lot of a lot of people in this world, and we're just blessed to have you 
staying with us during all this uh, very strange trials that we're facing. Mm. Um, you've kept us uh, unified uh, in this church. Um, you've allowed families to start appreciating each other mm. through this distance. Um, I pray, Lord, that you continue to keep the households, individual households, together and at peace. Mm -hmm. No internal conflicts, no getting on top of each other in destructive ways. And that we come out of it having gone through this better for it. Mm -hmm. And when we're reunited with everyone, there's just more appreciation and more value of the time spent together mm. and we just pray for continued protection and continued unity mm. so that we can all progress together mm. in Jesus name Amen Amen Now we have um, for me to take us in the next one our Father, we thank you very much for today. Another Sunday that we can come to you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have been to us. You have been our helper. You have been our protector. Father, today we are asking for healing for all those who are sick, who are in hospitals, or who are at home. Not just with coronavirus, but those who suffer with hypertension, Mm. diabetes, mm. anxiety, mm. arthritis, and even the process of aging. Mm. We thank you that it is your will that we uphold, not just in our spirit and soul, but and in our physical body. Help us, Lord, mm. to individually be kind to our physical bodies and to treat our bodies as your temple. Give us the wisdom that we need to eat and drink and sleep right. Father, we thank you that health, healing, and wholeness has been given to us through Jesus Christ. And we're so full of gratitude since you have given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Help us, O oh God, to be confident in your faithfulness to keep your promises to us. Grant each and every one of us, your children, an awareness of your presence and give us perfect confidence in you. Teach us, O oh Lord, to yield ourselves to your never failing care, knowing that your love and power surrounds us at all times and being confident that in the name of Jesus, no evil will penetrate to harm us. We trust totally in your wisdom and providence to give us health and strength and peace on a daily basis. Father, those who are dealing with mental health issues, we pray that you hold their hearts within yours and renew their minds, mm. that you give them the spirit of love, of mm. power, and a sound mind. Mm. Help all of us to be aware of our mental health needs and a consciousness of your presence with us. Because you have given us, you have promised that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, we commit those who have been bereaved and we ask that you comfort them and give them joy. Help them to rejoice in Christ even as they grieve. Mm. Envelope them in your arms of love with the peace and comfort that only you can provide. As days move into months, may the burden of this loss reduce. And as the months move to years, Father, please use the experiences for your glory. Help them to point others to you as a God of all comfort. Help them to find refuge in you alone. We thank you for Ditola and Kathleen, who were unwell, but because of your power, they are healed. We thank you for this, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
explica ya. Okay. Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Father, we just bring our leaders before you. We are in this season where they're trying to unlock and make decisions as to the next steps. And there's so many alternate noises going on. Father, we just pray in Jesus' name that you bring clarity of mind, clarity of thought, clarity of direction, that you will just give them wisdom in their decision-making concerning us into this next step, what to, lock, what to open up, what to keep short, which school to open, which businesses to open, and in all their planning, Father, Lord God, give them wisdom and direction. This is a new path for them, for us. Father, help them as they're making the decisions. And Father, a lot of reliance is also placed on the scientists who are doing various um, experiments to find a drug, to find, to improve the testing, to find antibodies, to find a cure. Father, I pray for your wisdom. Father, let your Holy Spirit give them and work in them to have that breakthrough that they need to help us all. And even as they're doing their projections and their analyses, Father, Lord God, give them clarity. Direct them. Not just in this nation, in all nations, because we are doing, everybody's going through all of this. Some people are opening up and then shutting back down. Father, we just need a solution. And our leaders are the ones you've placed in authority to do this job. So Father, you've put them there for a purpose. Let your spirit come upon them and open their hearts and their minds to hear from you and to be clear in the direction. Be a light unto them. Mm. Let them follow your lead. Let them hear from you in their own peculiar ways so that you will take the right steps for us. Father, we thank you for where you've helped all of us thus far. We pray, Lord God, that you just continue to help them, even at this difficult time. And help us to have patience with them and so that we are not the dissenting voices and remove all confusion from the media so that we'll be able to hear what they're really saying. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. And we thank you for where you have helped us thus far. We thank you that we are going into the month of uh, June. And Father, as um, various things are unlocked and children are going back to school and all the various businesses are going back, Father, we ask for protection, Lord. We come against uh, the second spike in a way that it will affect lives the way this has happened, Lord. We ask, Lord God, that you will uh, let the decisions and how we go into this next phase, be one that lives will not be lost, O oh Lord. We ask for your protection over us. We ask that you give us a presence of mind that we don't become casual or just uh, uh, casual with things, but we still continue to be cautious when we need to be cautious, careful when we need to be careful, sensitive when we need to be sensitive, aware when we need a sense of awareness, Lord. And as a people and as your people, and as those who are called by your name, our confidence is in you. Thank you, Father, because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. And um, as we come to the last song, there's a, there's a notice and there's been a demand for us to have a, um, to have a Bible study group. So we are the plan is to start on the 10th of June um, through Zoom, now that we have Zoom. And even when we go back um, um, out of locked, lockdown, we'll probably continue to at least have our Bible study group using Zoom. Um, I think that's a way where we can all participate from various parts of the world and whatever without necessarily leaving our homes. So uh, well, we'll start on the 10th of June 
it gives us a few more uh, uh, days to 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 across it on, on Wednesdays um, for Bible study from eight to um, nine thirty via Zoom, and so you'll be sent a different link um, for that um, for the for the Bible study. Uh, we have uh, gone through uh, 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 what we that we believe in uh, the grace of God. Um, we've looked at the 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 scope of it, the the how how extensive it is, how deep it is, and um, how how and what the foundation is. We've done all that, and as we go into this coming week. Um, we need to know that we have a father who is looking and waiting for us to come to him. We have a father who is keen to have us time and time again come to him. And um, as we end with this worship song, it reminds us of the fact that we have uh, the right and the benefit of running to the father, of going to our father, the almighty God, on earth daily or an hourly basis or a minute basis as we need. And this, and this week's word of encouragement is um, we ask for grace only to find forgiveness already offered. And it's based on uh, an extra uh, from uh, extra from um, um, Mark Lucado's um, book. Um, and I'll just read where this comes from. Um, at the time Martin Luther was having his, the, his Bible printed in Germany, in Germany, a printer's daughter encouraged God, encountered God's love. No one has told her about Jesus. Towards God, she felt no emotion but fear. One day, she gathered fallen papers of scripture from the floor. On one paper, she found the words, For God so loved the world that he gave dot 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 dot. The rest of the verse had not yet been printed. Still, what she saw was enough to move her. She thought that God will give anything moved her from fear to joy. Her mother noticed the change of attitude. When asked the cause of her happiness, the daughter produced the crumbled up piece of partial verse from her pocket. The mother read it and asked, what did he give? The child was perplexed for a moment and then answered, I don't know, but if he loved us well, if he loved us well enough to give us anything, we should not be afraid of him. If God loved us well enough to give us anything, we should not be afraid of him. We ask for grace only to find forgiveness already offered. May God help okay. us this week as we go through the week and for us to understand his grace, to live in the abundance of his grace. And, um, and so we will say the grace together. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercies shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now we'll have um if you if you we have a I hope open the chat room um for us to have a chat 
Um, if you can see that picture, those were the days. 